Welcome back. Thanks for joining me in this discussion of necrotizing enterocolitis in the section of pediatric surgery. Necrotizing enterocolitis is usually associated with premature babies, and the onset of necrotizing enterocolitis, also called NEC, uh, is usually after the first several weeks of life. Although there is an association with bottle-fed babies and that the symptoms occur generally after the first few feeds, babies who are not bottle-fed can certainly develop necrotizing enterocolitis as well. So on the examination, don't be fooled if the patient is not bottle-fed. What are some physical findings of a baby who has potential neck? Vomiting diarrhea, perhaps abdominal distension, coupled with some wall erythema. Although note, an abdominal wall erythema is potentially a late finding. And sometimes babies have bloody stools. How does this baby look to you? Well, it's difficult to tell sometimes based on looking at the baby alone. Oftentimes, pediatricians will tell you, babies who fail to thrive, again, fail to thrive, meaning they're not progressing day by day as expected. If you look closely here in this picture, the baby has a little bit of erythema around the central abdomen. Abdominal distension is difficult to tell, particularly in a newborn. All of their abdomens look a little protuberant. Now, let's visit some specific findings. Babies who are noted to be apneic or have respiratory failure. These are also important findings in any baby who isn't doing well and not has failure to thrive. Lethargy, shock and hypotension. Again, much like wall, abdominal wall erythema, shock and hypotension is potentially a late finding in neck. And coagulopathy. This is very similar in adults who develop disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, DIC. What might you find on routine laboratory studies? Here, you see the chemistry shows a hyponatremia, potentially a low chloride, and in certain circumstances, decreases in the hemoglobin and hematocrit, particularly if the baby has hematochesia or bleeding per rectum. Here's an abdominal x-ray. In this x-ray, the baby's lying supine on the back. Note the distended uh, loops of intestines. Here's another view. This is what we call commonly a baby gram. You see the entire baby on the x-ray. And again, note there are multiple loops of dilated bowel. How do we manage these patients with neck or necrotizing enterocolitis? Initially, it's mostly medical. If this is bottle feed, or feeds in general induced, we discontinue feeds and make the patient MPO, nothing by mouth. Sometimes the baby requires NG tube and bowel rest. We initiate broad spectrum antibiotics, covering broadly for gram negative rods and anaerobic uh, uh, organisms. And because the nutrition to the baby is of utmo utmost importance and we can't right away use the bowel, you should consider TPN on these patients. However, if the patient is clinically deteriorating, has hemodynamic instability, those are indications for surgery. Pneumoperitoneum suggests that there was a perforation or ischemic bowel. Any pneumoperitoneum requires exploratory laparotomy. And as I mentioned, if the baby has progressive clinical deterioration as evidenced by septic shock or hypotension, that may also warrant surgery. Now, if you're presented with a scenario, again, pneumoperitoneum, signs of perforation, or progressive clinical deterioration, the next step of management should be, should be surgery. I'd like to pose a question to you. What if your patient has continued hypotension and is progressively lethargic? What would you do? I'll give you a second to think about this. That's right. Absolutely, take the patient to the operating room. Don't stop at radiology. Don't get any more workup. These patients require exploratory laparotomy. Now, let's review some very important clinical pearls and high yield information for your examination. Remember, you need to have a high index of suspicion 
if your newborn is not tolerating feeds and has clinical deterioration. Don't wait for late signs such as septic shock or abdominal wall erythema to diagnose necrotizing enterocolitis. For your examination, remember that the next step in management is not surgery. It's usually to start with medical management and supportive care. However, as a reminder, if the scenario changes and the patient has clinical deterioration or you suspect that there's ischemic bowel, by all means, take the patient to the operating room for an exploratory laparotomy. Thank you very much for joining me on this discussion of necrotizing enterocolitis. Mm -hmm.